Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I'm Alex Payton. You can follow me at alexpayton123 on Instagram or alex.payton on the GCN app. And I'm Manon Lloyd. You can follow me over on Instagram at manonlloyd5 or on the GCN app at manon.lloyd. Coming up this week, we've got the new GCN Pro Kit, carbon fibre tyres, two new bikes and people that are going around deflating tyres. Mm, and we're going to be discussing our main talking point. What are the dangers of buying a used bike and kit? Oh, I love it. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. Actually, before we take a look at the poll, I just need to clarify something. Um, I don't iron my pants. That was Hank's doing, not me. I did not, I didn't say that. Oh, to be fair, he would know about that. Would he? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, no poll this week, um, oh. but we are gonna remember to do one this week. Okay, well, fair enough. Well, this week we wanna talk about buying used bikes and kit and some of the dangers of it, because it's just not as straightforward as you might have first thought. No, it's not. To be fair to Ollie, that used Pinarello that you bought for 500 pound, that was pretty cool. And he rode it up the Stelvio. And you brought an old uh, mountain bike that yeah. you turned into a gravel bike. That's pretty cool as well. Um, it's not much of a bargain anymore though, seeing as all the fancy parts have bolted yeah, on it. Yeah, that's but true. It is pretty cool and actually, the video when I ride the bike goes live on Saturday. So um, if you want to check it out, yeah, go sure. shredding. Make sure to tune into that. But to be fair, you and Ollie, you know what you're doing when it comes to bike and what to look for and what to avoid. But for someone who's not as experienced as you, yeah. how do we avoid buying an absolute lemon of a bike? Well, that's a good point because we're going to go through a few simple points that you can try to take note of and avoid when you're buying a bike. So the things we want to look out for are any maintenance issues with a bike, any damage that could be caused from a crash, or worst case scenario, that the bike could be stolen. In terms of maintenance or crash damage, you want to check the bike over, check for worn parts, play in the bearings, check if the gears work, that sort of thing. And these are all simple checks that you can do when you go and view the bike. In terms of crash damage, you're going along the same kind of lines. You want to look out for deep scuffs and scratches over some of the parts, things you should be mindful of. Damage to the levers, damage to the saddle, the pedals, the rear mech, and also, if it has been crashed, things could be bent and dinged in. So the rear mech could be bent in, could be dense on the frame. And if you've got a carbon fiber bike that you're looking at, you need to look out for some cracks in the frame. Just look very carefully at all of those parts. Now, depending on your budget and the price point that you're looking at, at the lower end of those price points, you do need to expect some sort of light scuffs and scratches on some components because it's gonna be fairly heavily used. Now, in terms of the worst case scenario, if you do buy a badly dashed crash damaged bike, get the right way around, <laughs> um, the worst case scenario would be one of those components breaks and fails and then you're gonna crash yourself. Don't want that, do no. you? Stolen bikes can also be a big danger. There are over 100,000 bikes stolen each year in the UK alone. And here in the UK, we have a website called the Bike Register where you can put the frame number in of the bike you're looking to buy and check if it's been stolen. And basically, you wanna avoid buying anything from that website, um, but that's just here in the UK, and I'm sure everywhere else in the world will have a similar sort of website. Yeah, and do you know something else I've just been thinking about? Something that you wanna try and avoid, counterfeit or fake bikes. That, now, yeah. you wanna avoid one. that. This is where you've got a bike which is painted up and got all the logos on it to make it look like something from maybe like a premium or top-end brand, and it's not what it actually is. It might be an unbranded frame, for example. Now that necess isn't necessarily a bad thing because there's loads of smaller manufacturers that make really reliable and dependable parts and frames, but what it could mean is that you're paying a premium for a product which is thought was like the top spec, all singing, all dancing one, when in reality, it's, it's not. not. It's the same, I guess, with designer handbags. There's yeah. lots of fake designer handbags that, you know, look very similar. To look the like the real thing. deal. Yeah, but, but they're, they're not. not. I don't tend to buy many designer handbags, I've got to be honest. Me neither. So most of the things we've spoken about so far, you physically need to be there to do all these checks. But if you're buying something online and collecting it, you can't really do that before you commit to the bike. So I cannot stress enough how important it is to have some sort of buyer protection, be that if you pay with a credit card or from a site like eBay, which is relatively safe and true. Yeah, okay, that's good, makes sense to me. But what about some of the other stuff like kit, maybe like some clothing, helmets, because surely there's some bargains to be had there, but are there some things that you'd maybe avoid? Personally, 100% hmm. would avoid buying helmets. Yeah. They see a lot, a lot of sweat and oh. can get pretty grim and I'm not sure I'd 
want to be putting someone else's helmet nah. on my head. But also, um, some helmet brands like Jira recommend that you only have a helmet between three to five years before replacing it because helmet technology is always improving. So helmets from even 10 years ago, yeah. they'd have proved so much and they're so much more safer. But also things maybe like waterproof jackets, yeah. depending on how much wear they get, you know, they can not be waterproof anymore and the repellent can come off. Yeah, and their sort of fancy pants yeah. coating wears off over time. Premium yeah. like winter jackets, I think is maybe a good one, along the same lines as like a rain jacket. Some of those things cost a fortune when they're new, yeah, exactly. but you could pick up a bit of a bargain. Yeah. Something that I would probably, not probably, yeah, I think I would avoid buying is used bib shorts or base layers. I think we're talking about stuff that is like yeah. close to the skin, gets all sweaty. Very personal bits of clothing, those. Yeah. I mean, people do buy used bib shorts, yeah. but maybe if they're like. If they're brand new, I'll be worn once. Or... Yeah, they're pretty new. I wouldn't buy. You know the ones where there's always that one person, like a group ride, that has um, like bib shorts that are like really like worn thin and the light goes yeah, like worn they've out. They've had a lot of wear. Yeah, I wouldn't buy those things. No, me no. neither. But. This is no, by no means a complete Gaia's bide. We've only just scratched the surface on this, but you guys, I'm sure you've had lots of experience in buying second-hand things or anything like that. So we want some of your tips. Please leave them down in that comment section below and help each other out on what to avoid. Do you know what else we should do? Have a poll. We should have a poll, right. Let's do it. I've made a little list here, a short list is the stuff that we're gonna have in the poll. So our poll is gonna be, what bike tech and stuff have you bought used? So the options are complete bike, wheels, clothing, slash helmet, or you've just not bought anything used, only interested in box fresh stuff. Mm. Yeah, what wow. do you reckon? Head over to GCN app, yeah. vote on it. Head over, I might have a little vote on what it. What stuff have you bought used? All um, of that. I've bought wheels. Yeah. Um, I, I bought a bike. Yeah. Um, but the bike I bought, it was quite local. Well, not local, it was, it was, it was in Wales. No used so. bib shorts? No use big shorts, <laughs> no. Okay. But, yeah. Cool, I've, I've right. Lots of things. Head over to GCN app, get voting. Thanks very much. It's now time for hot and spicy tech. And my word, let me tell you, we've got some spicy stuff coming up. And we're going to start with our brand new GCN Pro Team Kit. I'm not oh sure you're ready gosh. for this. How good does that look? It does look bloody good. I'm, I'm in love with it. And we've also got shorts. brand new shorts. Matches as well. shorts. Got got a different this stuff's each leg incredible. Different design. So I'll tell you cool. what, I love the design, it's super cool. I All think... of this stuff, right, is available at shop.globalcyclingnetwork. I'm excited about riding in it, are you? I'm super excited. I love it. I think it's so well designed. Um and I yeah, can't wait to get wearing it. Great partnership work with Castelli on this. Yeah. Look how cool it is. So if you do want to get your hands on it, make sure to head over to the shop and get it. I can't wait to ride home in this. Oh, new kit for the ride. New home. kit day! Medium was a bit tight over my t-shirt. Oh, hopefully I'm not gonna have to dip into a large. <laughs> right, next up in hot tech, <laughs> we've got some carbon tires. And we're always banging on about how important tires are if you want to go fast. And they are great value for money if you want to upgrade something on your bike. But what about carbon tires? I mean, check these out, right? So these are the Genus. CCR tyre from Eerie Research. Ooh. I presume it's Eerie or Ear Research. Um, and they use a product called Carbon X, which is infused into the rubber compound. Now they say this is a component made of carbon nanofilaments, which helps to reduce the rolling resistance, improves the grip, and it also helps improve the puncture resistance. Now, in their tests, I've got this information here, they say using a 26 millimeter tubeless tyre results in just a 9.5 watt loss per tyre. That's quite a lot. It's up there with some of the fastest yeah. tyres, isn't it? Now, neither of us are, neither of us are like what, chemists, scientists, so we don't really know Ollie's, all about. Ollie's a doctor. Ollie's a doctor, but he's not here, is he? No. Um, so we're not going to pretend to know all about the techno babble of the carbon nano elements, we don't but know. it's there to replace some of the components that are normally used in a rubber compound, and they say it makes it faster, more puncturous, and stuff, stuff like that. So it's pretty cool, hey? Mm, very I cool. wonder if we're going to see carbon tyres in the future or. I wonder what the sort of next big technological advance will be in tyres. Mm. Mm. Only time will tell. Mm. Next up, two new bikes from Avea. So you've got the Kemen or Kemen SUV or sports utility vehicle. Yes, and these e-bikes are designed a little bit more than for your everyday ride. Avea say they turn your rides into more of a delightful adventure. And we've got the two models, one with the traditional 
shaped frame and one with a step through frame. Bit more practical if you're dressing up smart for work in your slim fit suit oh, or a dress. I'm always wearing a suit, aren't I? Yep. Imagine if we wore a suit to work. Imagine if I did the texture on a suit, that'd be incredible. We should do that one day. Dress up fancy Special one occasion. day. Special occasion. Yeah, okay. So these are designed with Trekking in mind. They've got a Shimano EP8 mid-drive motor, 100mm travel fork, and they've got a claimed range of five hours battery life. Even when they're loaded up with all the kit and stuff like that. So the difference between the two is the SUV or sports utility version has got tires more suited to riding off-road and it's got a rear sort of luggage and rack system capable of carrying much greater load. So the difference between the two racks is you've got 18 kilograms or 27 kilograms of load capacity. Pretty nice. cool, eh? Very cool. I do like the look of these. Yeah, mm. very nice. Now, talking of SUVs, but a bit more in the car sense, I've seen a few news articles recently about an activist group called the Tire Extinguishers, right? Get this. So they go round and this group encourages people to deflate the tires of SUVs in like busy cities around the world because they think they're causing too much pollution. Surely there is a more effective way, or more sensible way to reduce climate change than just going around and letting yeah. people's tires out because surely they're just gonna pump them back up and get back on the road. And also, how do they know that that SUV isn't a hybrid or an yeah. electric one? Well, actually they say on their website they're not interested about that. So on their, really? yeah, on their website, they say not interested in electrics or hybrids, just as bad as anything else. And bizarrely, it gives like a load of information on an advice on how to let car tires down. Crazy. Eh? It also says that they should practice on bike tires too and do it what? in dark. But I'm hoping they're not going around practicing on other people's bike tires. Hopefully, they yeah. can do it on their own bikes. Okay. And I hopefully they're not driving their cars to the SUVs. That is a good point. To it's like a do double, double bluff out of me, wasn't it? Don't do it. Not, not, not sure about this. Anyway, I'm not going to get all political talking no. about the rights and wrongs of the world and anything to do with climate change. Um, but if you do feel strongly on the subject and you want to do something to help, easiest thing you can do, replace a car journey for one on a bike. Easy. Simple. Yeah. Don't overcomplicate it. Okay, right. Next up in hot tech, Filippo Ganna is finally doing oh. the hour world record. So his attempt is rumoured to be taking place in Gretchen um, Velodrome in Switzerland on August the 23rd and 24th. I mean, hopefully he competes it um, before those two days are over. He's only got a ride for an hour. Yeah, true. <laughs> Maybe he's going for a two day... Two, a a two day, day attempt. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, so but... Campanarts currently holds the men's hour world record at 55.089 kilometers, and Ghana is doing his attempt at sea level rather than up at altitude mm. because presumably they've worked out that that's the best thing they've done. A lot of our records have been done at the Grenchen um, Velodrome, and if anybody is going to break that record, it's it's going to be a flea Tell you what, I can't wait to see the bike. It's going to be absolutely sick. I bet oh. it's got some super bling components on it. It's <laughs> going to be. Right, and on that note, more hot tech next week. More hot tech next week. It's now time for the best bike shop in the world this week. Manon, what have we got? Unfortunately, we have no bikes. What? Shops none? This week. No, none have been uploaded. What are you doing? Please upload your bike shops. Yeah. We want to see your local bike shop that you maybe buy a new bike from, where you get your bike fixed, where you buy your gels or your, or your socks, or yeah. I don't know, they might do some... Good All rides sorts. on the weekend, they might have a fancy cafe. We want to see them. We want to feature them yeah. on the sh show. So please upload them to the GCN app and use the hashtag bike shop. That way we can find them. I feel like I want to shed a little tear for not having any of this It is a bit sad. We want to see your bike shops. But good right. news is, it's now time for the bike vault. <laughs> I, I knew this was coming. So this is the part of the show where you upload pictures of your bike into the bike vault on the GCN app and then we judge them if you're nice or super nice. If they're super nice, Malon rings the bell. Right. And? And what? The drop. The drop. Oh, and we could do the bell drop if something is sort of blows our mind. We drop we'll the bell. Drop the bell. We've got a couple of dents in the floor over here. <laughs> um, right, first up, let's take a look at the most super nice bike from last week and it is from Archie Paracyclist. What is this? Is it Cannondale? I think yeah. so. Cannondale. This looks nice. Very cool backdrop. Fancy. I'm assuming they're in Spain. Um, I'm going to take a guess. Yeah. A yes. That certainly doesn't look like Bath, does mm. it? Okay, that's cool. We're gonna we're gonna super nice that. I'm gonna super nice that. All right, you go. go. <laughs> Lovely. Um, first up this week, have we got? Uh, we've got Will Door. Yeah. Um, what have we got here? Ribble Endurance SLR. Very muddy bike. Why is the front wheel clean and the back wheel isn't? Um, that's actually a really good point. I hadn't I'm noticed that. I'm not sure. I'm 
it, even though the spike is a little bit dirty, yeah, it's still doing it for me. You like that, do you? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it, yeah, right. it still looks pretty good. So it's good. got like a one by chain ring, sort of gravel bike-esque. Yeah, all right. I quite Freestyle like it. it. Go on, ring the bell. Super yeah. nice then. Um, next up, we've got <laughs> Hayden uh, Gutil. Or oh, Specialized S Works M4. From 2001. Ooh. God, this looks like an old school bike now. That Even though it's only 2001. School. Feels like that's 2001. Yeah. yeah, I know. Crazy, eh? What? Um, well, it's well presented. The valves aren't quite aligned. Um, Biggie Smalls cranks were aligned. No accessories left on it. Um, I think it's a super. I think it's a super nice. Oh, I don't want to be too harsh. We're off to a good start this yeah, week. Right. Next up, what have we got? Cycling Dimov. Yeah. Um, what have we got here? Uh, Robert Asprey. Asprey. I can't say I've heard of that before. No, me neither. Cool, um, like perspective on the photo. I yeah, like that. bit far away, and I'm just just having to zoom in to see what we've got here. Oh, um, don't zoom in. Just do the obvious thing. Just move the laptop closer. <laughs> or maybe on a little bit of adventure with um, yeah. a frame bag. Ma match it. I like that the bottles match the frame bag. That that's good. Yeah. Um, don't think we're in Biggie Smalls. Um, I'm, I'm in, uh, because we've been so generous so far, I'm inclined to lean towards just saying a nice. I, yeah, I'm just going to say a nice It's not centralising to... the picture. The bike's lent up what it appears to be on the frame or the crank. I'm worried that they're going to be scratching it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's a nice from us. It's a nice. Still very nice. One. Next up is Sonny Creot. Sonic Riot. God, I'm awful at names. <laughs> <laughs> Chanelli. Oh, hello. Okay, yeah, hello, I like this. Hello. Track bike. Oh no, it's got fixie. a front brake fixie. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is cool. That is nice. Um, cranks aren't aligned, but we can let that slide. That's a fixie. Yeah, it's cool. I like that. That is very cool. We don't get many fixies. Look do at we? the design on the forks and the frame. Yeah, I, I don't care. Super mm -hmm. nice. Whatever. And can you see just on the in? I think it's on the inside of the fork. I feel like there's a, a pattern on the inside of the fork as well. Yeah, I'll go with that. God, we are flying through them today. Next up is Van. Van de, de Tim? Van de Tim, 1880. I presume that's not the date of birth. Might be. Oh, blooming old. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, what is it? An MMR Adrenaline Aero. Oh. Again, not a brand I'm familiar with, but what this, a cool looking bike. This looks like it could be box fresh. Maybe it is. It's got the, is it a new Ultegra? Yeah, I think it's got a new Ortega group set on it. Valves are aligned, we're big, small, biggest... cranks are no, in the right place. If you want to be fussy, it's slightly annoying me that the wheel. they've cropped out yeah, yeah, the little the back wheel. wheel. Or maybe the, the bike vault did that. Maybe it was an error. It could have been, but I feel like they, 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 good. they knew what they were doing. How, how is the bike held up? I mean, if there's a shadow stand. Is stone. there a shadow stand? This is a problem with shadow stands. You can't, can never They're really that good, tell. you can't see them. But, I mean, I'm go Got a super nice that. <laughs> and next up we've got uh, Samuel TH Bonnet. Yeah, this is good as it's getting for me. Yeah. For, we've got a Marin um, bike four corners, it says. Oh, here. and this is what we call bike packing. You've got wow. the kitchen sink on that bike. Yeah, so normally we say it's good to remove all the accessories, but we've got to, <laughs> we've got to let an exception here. I mean, you'd probably, you'd probably still be there putting it back on the bike. Yeah. yeah. That is a cool picture. I mean, I'm I'm really intrigued in the description. It doesn't does it say? No, I'm not sure 4, what it is. Four thousand kilometers. Four thousand kilometers I mean, route. It's in it's in a different language, but four thousand kilometers. It does say four thousand kilometers. So I'm guessing they're going to ride four thousand kilometers. So fair play. But I'd love to know more about this adventure. In I, I, I'm slightly. Um, we're well, not annoyed. It's a shame we can't see the bike so well, but it's a cool I mean, picture. I mean, I wouldn't worry about that, Alex, because this looks this looks awesome. Okay. I'm well, sorry. I'm, I'm gonna. You gonna bell drop it or super nice it? I was gonna super nice yeah, it. Yeah, super nice it. That was the last one this week. Oh, that's it. Because that's way too fast. This I wish the bike vault never ended. I wish the tech show never ended. But unfortunately, it has come to that point. Remember to comment underneath the video, letting us all know about your uh, like tips for buying used bikes. Yeah. Help everybody out. That's it. We're gonna go now. Should we call it early finish? Go home today. Yeah. Let's go home today. Oh, remember, our new kit, if you do fancy oh, yeah. getting your hands on it, head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Right, see you later.